Hi, today we're going to talk about a Dynamo 2 that allows automatic create of cables as conduit following a cable tray. The thing is, with large style data centers, there are tons of cables that need to be connected from one rack to another rack following the overhead cable trays. You can see that a group of cables are uh, grouped together as bundles and they run across the trays. Sometimes there are rise and drops, sometimes they need to uh, penetrate the floor. So it is um, useful to model these in Revit as a way to visualize and coordinate. Seen here are rise and drops. The thing is, with uh, within Revit, there is no default uh, cable families. A way to work around is to model one of these bundles uh, as a conduit. The benefit of conduits, of course, is a system family that allows the auto create of fit uh, fittings and. It understands itself as a complete run, so you can get the lens. And also you can drag and drop to make certain modifications. After we create these tables as conduit, of course we can use work sets or types to differentiate them with the actual conduit. But if we're going to make uh, modify each of the bundles by ourselves, it's going to take a lot of time. So here's how we're going to do it using Dynamo. So I have a tray network. If I'm going to connect the cables from one end to another end, and we have a specific layout for this, here's a drafting view. We're going to use as a indicators. The square is the tray and the circles are the conduits or the cables or the cable bundles. I can make as many of these circles as I want and uh, okay. we're going to uh, it's going to read this drafting view and create the cables as we want in this cross-section layout. So here we have a look at this code, the required packages, the description of this, and the whole layout. We're going to start by selecting all the tray network. We're going to move to here to select a starting tray and to select a end tray. Let's hit run to see the highlight. So it looks like the, this tray is ending on the wrong side. We're going to do that. So it moves to there. We have select uh, specific types of uh, conduit and the corresponding level. Now we're gonna to connect this whole thing and starting to uh, generate cables. Of course it is reading that drafting view one and reading the lines and text to see how many cables it's gonna to create. And it's gonna to read this whole cable train network to calculate the shortest, uh, the shortest run from that end to this end. I'm going to hit run. And now we get these uh, cables. In this 3D view, let's see. So they're all connected. We understand it as a whole run. We look at the cross section that they're giving the correct answers. 
So if I reset the height and looking at from the starting point towards the end point in the cross section, this is exactly the same as this layout. So now we have generated multiple conduit or, or cables across the cable tray network and matching our predefined layout of the cross section. It will also give us the conduit run lens at the very end. So if you ask me what if we want to take specific route, well of course we can do that. What we're going to do is to hide a certain element when we select the train network so that um, it will force the code to find the next shortest lens. For example, if we're going to make, uh, we're going to hit run again, so it will remove the previous conduit. And you know, we're going to select this new network where we're missing that part. Hit run. See, that's not highlighted. Again, from this start to that end, it's going to force to take a different route this time. So go back and connect the generate conduit and run. So this time, you see, it takes a different route here. And we're going to have a larger total run length for these uh, conduits or cables. This code will also understand a relatively more complex tray system. Here we have a tray system that has 90 degree bend, non 90 degree bend, 90 degree rise and drop, and here is a smaller rise and drops and turns. And connect that. I'm going to select this new train network. Move here to select the new start and the new end. You can take a run and look at it. So it looks like that part is wrong. Starting point here. So start from there and here. More complex tray layout. It will still generate the conduit and create the rise and drops accordingly. Gonna Change the level to level two, and we're gonna to connect this part. Again, it will have the same layout as this one: larger one on top and four smaller one in the center. And I hit run. There. So you see that we have a conduit that uh, or cable has this specific rise and drops following making the turn. And if we're looking from the starting point to end point, the cross sections we want is matching with the drafting view we defined. In another case, we have some pre-established, um, for example, we model some existing 
um, cables along an existing tray. We have existing core sections, and we want to basically make the same thing happening on the other side. Well, in this case, we can just uh, mirror, but if we have a different layout, it's going to be more difficult to make the same cross sections. So we can, um, there's another here, this piece of code will take this uh, cross sections and generate a drafting view so that we can use that drafting view to do the same uh, conduit layout on the other train network. So I have a drafting view, a blank drafting view. See, there's nothing here. And I have a cross section. I want to take all these elements and generate a drafting view using this existing tray and cable cross section. I'm going to select all the element here. I'm going to put it in there and it will create the uh, drafting view for me so that I can work with it. So this is blank drafting view. This is a cross section and we have select all this element. Hit run there. I get this new drafting views matching the layout of the existing uh, conduit and cable tray core section. Cable cable tray core section. I keep seeing this in the other way. So now if I go to level 3, I can select new run, pick a start, pick a end, make it connecting with the correct side. And this time, it's going to read the layout from our newly created drafting 2 view. Uh, have the level set to set that to level 3. and hit generate. There. So now we have a new part of the cables and cable trays matching a pre-modeled tray part, tray and uh, cable element. This way we can like uh, automate it, create a ton of cables where uh, if we're doing that manually, it's going to take a huge amount of time. Once we can um, automatically generate these trays and uh, no, not generate these trees, automatically generate these uh, cables, we can start to do some analyze. For example, uh, what is the field ratio of the uh, cables versus the cable tray? What is the maximum weight that a cable tray can handle? What is the maximum length that a single cable is taking from a starting point to an end point? All these kind of analyze will be model based and we can go from there to better um, design and coordinate the complicated data centers. Thank you very much.